Hi class, this is Professor Smith. I'm going to be doing a movie on the confidence interval for the population standard deviation use of the standard normal. And it turns out um, in this particular problem, if you've already gone out to resources and watched the video, that would be really helpful. Let me scroll down so you can see where I'm referring to. Under Chapter 8, there's a video called Confidence Interval Movie Harry Larry, and he calls himself Harry Larry. Now, his voice is enough to make you a little bit cuckoo, but I'm here to warn you the movie really would help you. So if you watch that first before watching this one, that would be great. However, you could skip watching Harry Larry, but it would just add a little bit more sense to where all this stuff is coming from. But again, I'll go back out to do the problem. So we have here a lifetime of certain brand of electric light bulbs is known to have a standard deviation of 49. Suppose that a random sample of 90 bulbs of this brand has a mean of lifetime of 477. Find a 99% confidence interval for the true mean lifetime of all light bulbs of this brand. Then complete the table below. Carry your intermediate computations to at least three decimal places and round your answer to one. So it says here in this first sentence, the lifetime of a certain brand of electric bulbs is known to have a standard deviation of 49. That's equivalent to saying that all of the bulbs would have a standard deviation of 49. However, in reality, that's unlikely um, to happen, um, but sometimes we can set the standard deviation once we tweak a manufacturing process uh, where we know that's what it's going to be. So it, it, uh, this example here, that's what it's telling us, that the population standard deviation is 49. And so I'm going to go out to Word, and in Word there's a program called MathType to capture what you would just write on your paper. So the first thing that we have on here is that the standard deviation for the population is denoted sigma, the baby letter Greek S, equals 49. Then they tell us that we have a sample of 90 bulbs of this brand, and then it had a mean lifetime of 477. And so I've captured that there. And then they ask us in this problem to find a 99% confidence interval. So in order to find a 99% confidence interval, we have to find out what's in the tails. And so 100% minus 99% is going to be 1%. When you write that as a decimal, it's 0.01. So 0.01 is going to be in the tail. So in order to find out how much is in each tail, you have to divide that by 2. And so if you take 0.01 divided by 2, you'll get 0 0.005. So then we're going to go out to the Alex calculator and compute the z-score. So we can do z of 0 0.01 divided by 2. Alex will actually do that for you. Or you can plug in z of 0 0.005, because sometimes students accidentally divide the z-score by 2. So you can do the z of 0 0.005. I don't know what I did there, you guys. How about I clear it out? There we go. And so we get that z-score of 2.5, uh, and they say round it to at least three decimal places. So 2.576, because the 8 would round that 5 up to a 6. So 2.576. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to write out the formula for computing the confidence interval using equation editor. So it turns out it's given by x bar plus or minus z, which is 2.576 times sigma which is given by the Greek letter here. And you know what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to capture that guy and put it here so I don't have to type it each, look for it each time. Divided by the square root of n. So that's the formula for finding the confidence interval. So let's go out to the Alex calculator and do that. In our particular case, uh, when we plug in the values, we're going to plug in our 477, and then we're going to do the plus or minus 2.576 times 49 
divided by the square root, and I believe in our case it was 90. And so that's the formula that we would use. So let's go out to the Alex calculator and um, put that in. That'd be nice if I could copy it. Control C and put it into the Alex calculator. I think not. Control V. I didn't think so. All right. So it's 477 plus or minus 2.576 times sigma, which was 49, divided by the square root of 90. And so that's the formula for finding the confidence interval. So we get two values, 463.69, or if you round it, 463.7. And then the other one is 490.3. And so we believe that this particular um, value for this particular sample um, has numbers um, 463.7 and 490.3. So the true population mean, um, this could be the sample that actually captures that true population mean. 1% of the time you're going to get a sample that doesn't, but 99% of the time you are going to get a sample that will yield uh, the capturing of the true population mean. So let's uh, do one more. So it says the lifetime of a certain battery is known to have a standard deviation of 23. Suppose you have a random sample of 60 and it has a mean of 36.7. Based on this, let's find a 95% confidence interval. So let's capture the information that we do know. So we know that um, sigma is equal to 23 in this particular problem. So that's the population standard deviation. It's known to be 23. The sample size in this particular case is um, 60 and then the mean is 36.7 hours. They want us to find a 95% confidence interval so that means we have to take 100 minus 95. Just think of money. What's a dollar take away 95? Gives you 5 cents. And 5 cents when you represent that as a decimal is 0.05. And then if you take that and divide it by 2, and you can even do it on the Alex calculator if you like. So if you take 0.05 and divide it by 2, you get 0.025. And so we're going to find the z-score associated with that. So I'm going to select it. When I select it, notice the little red boxes appear. So I'm going to hit the z for that of 0.025. And this is one you'll see a lot, which is 1.95999. And so if we go to the fourth decimal place, um, it's going to change that 59 to 60. So it's 1.960. So let's copy that and capture that down. So the z-score is going to be 1. Point, whoops, 960. For computation's sake, we don't need the zero. Um, but if we were to express the answer on Alex and they wanted the z-score, you would want to put the zero because they say to express it to three decimal places. All right, so then let's go out to the Alex calculator and then go ahead and do the computation. All right, so the mean was 36.7. I was kind of hoping that we could see both at the same time. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, perfect. Yes, I think you can see it. Yes, it can. Okay, cool. Now we can see everything at the same time. So I'm going to put in the 36.7 into the Alex calculator. Plus or minus um, 1.96 times, what was it? Uh, sigma was 23. divided by the square root of 60. And so we get 30.88, which rounds to 30.9, and then 
And so we have it. So I hope this movie is helpful for helping you compute the confidence interval for the population mean use of standard normal. Bye-bye. Oh, if you have any questions, call me, 916-813-9027.